This video is on cranial nerve palsies. We will examine the clinical presentation and causes of lesions to the ocular motor nerve, the facial nerve, and the trigeminal nerve. We will then end by overviewing the presentation of lesions of the other cranial nerves. So the ocular motor nerve, as the name suggests, is the motor of the oculus that controls the movement of most of the eye muscles. It controls all the eye muscles except the lateral rectus, which is done by the abducens nerve, and the superior oblique, done by the trochlear nerve. So a lesion of the ocular motor nerve presents with hypertropia, exotropia, or more colloquially, down and out, at rest, as well as ptosis, so a droopy eyelid. You get ptosis due to weakness of the lavada palpebrae muscle, due to unopposed action of the lateral rectus muscles, due to the intact abducens nerve, we have an abducted or an outward facing eye and then down due to unopposed action of the superior oblique from the trochlear nerve. Causes include infarction, so you can have a stroke or microvascular hemorrhage in that area, uncle herniation, so if there's raised ICP and there's herniation into the infratentorial area, cavernous sinus syndrome because the ocular motor nerve is in the cavernous sinus and the orbital apex syndromes, so there may be other cranial nerves affected. The next nerve is the trigeminal nerve, which, as the name suggests, tri so has three branches, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular branches. And when there's a lesion, there are both sensory and motor effects. Sensory includes loss of facial sensation, the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and the sensory component of the cranial reflex. In terms of motor, you have muscles of mastication, so the patient may have difficulty chewing. Causes similar to the ocular motor nerves, so you can have infarction in the area, orbital apex syndrome, cavernous sinus syndrome, as well as superior orbital fissure lesions such as masses or tumors, because this is where the branch exits. The next nerve is the facial nerve, so it controls facial muscles, so presentation will include facial weakness. When you're conducting a cranial nerve exam, the patient will not be able to elevate their eyebrows on the affected side. They may have an unwrinkled forehead, so one side may be wrinkled, one may not be. A flattened nasolabial fold, drooping of the mouth and the motor component of the corneal reflex. Causes include a Bell's palsy, trauma and infarction. Also, Ramsey's Hunt syndrome, but they also have ears issues. And it's important here to differentiate between an upper motor and new one lesion or stroke where the top half, so like the eyebrows and the forehead, will be intact. But if both the top and the lower areas are infected, it's a facial nerve or a lower motor neuron lesion. To end, let's look at some other cranial nerve presentations. So the olfactory nerve is responsible for smell, so a lesion would call anosomia. Optic nerve supplies the ipsilateral eyes, ipsilateral vision loss, trochlea, vertical diplopia, as we talked touched on before. It controls the superior oblique, so if it's in a lesion, the eye will not be able to move in that direction, move up, leading to not being able to synthesize and look essentially in the same direction, leading to diplopia. Vestibular cochlear nerve, hearing loss, glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve 9, leads to dysphagia, as well as the loss of the gag reflex. Vagus nerve is the tendon nerve and has a wide array of functions, but it can present with cord, as well as a hoarse voice, but also GIT, RESP, presentations are possible. The accessory nerve is involved in shoulder shrugging, so shoulder pain, and the hypoglossal nerve is involved with the tongue muscles, so you may have a deviated tongue to the affected side. Thank you for watching. If you learned something, please tell a friend who may also find it useful.